Hi everyone, Rob Harris here. Now today I'm taking a look at the song I Want Your Love by Chic, uh, featuring Nile Rodgers. No secret at all that I am a massive fan of Nile Rodgers. Uh, I've been a fan of his since before I even knew who he was. I, I grew up listening to the music of Chic. Um, I've got an older brother and sister. Listened to Diana Ross, uh, Sister Sledge, all of the amazing work he did with bands like Duran Duran and In Excess. And I have really borrowed or stolen lots of elements of his guitar playing that I've taken on into my uh, career as a guitar player. So um, I'm going to be taking a look at the, the song, breaking down the chords, looking at some of the other parts in the song and um, taking, you know, talking about how I can use those in my own playing. So that is the basically the two sections of the song. It's it's, it's very simple. Uh, there's a chorus part that goes A minor seven for a bar, then the next bar is A minor seven for two beats, then it goes E minor seven for two beats, then F major seven for a full bar, then the third bar of the sequence goes D minor seven for two beats, E minor seven for two beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Chord voicing wise, I, I've seen Nile Rogers play this, and um, and we we do play it differently. Um, it's just my choice of how I I prefer to play these chords. Um, I've seen videos of Nile playing it with the full bar chords, like I just played it there. Now, I don't tend to do things like that, um, but as you can see, when I've, when I've studied Niall playing it, he, we do the same thing in that we're bouncing on the chords like this. One, two, three, four. So you can see I'm only pressing down. My hand comes doesn't come away from the neck, but it presses down on the chord when I want to hear it. So I'm, my right, my, my strumming hand is doing And as you can see, my hand's only pressing down the chord when I want to hear it. I voice these chords differently myself. I don't play, when I'm playing this in, in a band, I don't tend to play the full voicing. I tend to change the way I'm playing my chords. Um, so rather than having my thumb on the back, my thumb is on the top of the neck. The reason I do this is because when I'm playing with a full band, as I've spoken about before, the bass is covered usually. There's a bass player playing, so I don't need to double up on that. I don't. I, it's just not my preference of sound. So I might have my thumb playing the fifth fret of the um, of the E string to give me my A root note. But most of the time, I'm concentrating on this part. So my thumb is over the top, playing the fifth fret of the E, and my four, my first finger is barring the fifth fret of the D, G, B, and E strings. And the open A is kind of being touched by by my thumb. It's just pressing that down, but my thumb, the fleshy part of my thumb there, is actually muting my A string. So I get that, and what that's what that does for me is it kind of it gets rid of that fifth, that root and fifth thing that's going on there, which really thickens up the sound. But I choose to make the chord the chord smaller because I'm in this I'm getting all of the notes that I need to, to basically say that that's an, an A minor seven. I'm getting my flat and seventh there. I'm getting my flat and third there. I'm getting my fifth there and I'm getting my root note there. So that's basically an A minor seven. Just those four notes. And I tend to, you know, uh, reference the root note as I'm playing. So if I do this, one, two, three, four. 
You hear that? I hit the root note on the very first beat of the bar. So when I'm playing on my own, that tells me that I'm, I'm playing an A minor seven chord. Um, you, it, you, I don't need to hear it like this. You don't need to hear the A being hit all the time. You can just state what the chord is of the very first beat where the chords change. And that's kind of what I tend to do um, when I'm playing on my own. I kind of voice the chords so I can hear where the rooting of the chord is. But otherwise, I kind of just concentrate on the, the funky sort of higher end stuff. Going to the E minor seven, same thing. Um, so I'm voicing my chord. Niall voices his chord like this with a full bar chord. Um, but I tend to do it like that. With my thumb over the neck, I'm not barring my first finger. I kind of have my thumb over the top of the neck because I am concentrating on the, these four strings up the top here, the D, G, B, and E string for my E minor seven chord. So the first two bars of this go like this, three, four. Then I've got my F major seven chord which uh, when I've seen Nile Rogers play it, he plays it in this with this voicing. So it's like your fourth finger is on the eighth fret of the A, your third finger is on the seventh fret of the D, and your first finger is barring the fifth fret of the, uh, the G, B, and E strings. Okay. And as you hear, I kind of, state what the chord is by playing the root note. My thumb is over the top of the neck to mute the low E string. And once I've stated what the chord is, I just stay up this in. I don't, I don't, I'm not hitting too many root notes. Um, and then D minor seven, which is the same. By doing it that way, your ear already knows what the chord changes are. You don't need to be, well, I personally don't feel like I need to be hammering out what the root note of every chord is because the harmony of the chords dictates what the chords, what the changes are. So that's the chorus section. Now, my all time favorite section of this song, which I thought was the coolest thing I'd ever heard and, and, and really the most understated but important guitar part for me and this is something I do a lot and I, these are my favorite types of parts is where they're not doing much so the verse just stays purely on a minor seven two three Absolutely love that part. That's that that gives me such joy to play that part. Whenever I do that song and play it, that's the bit I'm looking forward to the most in the song. Um, there's a real strength in keeping this the notes when you're pushing down the chord really short. See what I'm doing? I'm barely fretting. I'm barely pushing the, the chord down. Genius part. Absolute genius part. And and. Uh, you know, you can add extra little bits like adding the ninth on, so. It's such a clip sound when you're adding that stuff in. It's just the tiniest little bits of detail. And I, I really, when I'm playing that, I like to stick on it and I try to show as much restraint as possible from not coming off that part. And that's a time when I'm playing where I'm really focusing on what the hi-hat is doing, what the drummer's doing with the hi-hat, because I want my guitar part to completely lock in. It's almost like the hi-hat, the 16th hi-hat part is connected to the guitar part and vice versa. It's, it, you know, it's almost like the drummer is playing the part. One thing I really like to do a lot when I'm looking and learning a track is I look, like to look at the other instrumentation on it. In particular on this song, um, really love the bass part. Importantly with the bass part on this, it's, it's so cleverly put together between Bernard Edwards and Niall. 
it's just a perfect bit of uh, sort of uh, musical tapestry. Um, and I like to learn these things because I can transfer a bass part or a string part to something I might play on the guitar, something you might play on the guitar when you're coming up with your own guitar parts on your own tracks um, or if you're doing a session for someone. So um, I'm just going to play the bass part along here. I've got a looper. I'm just going to play the guitar part on the looper and play the bass along. So as you can hear, those two parts lock in together really well. They're really sort of, they work together musically very, very well. Um, the bass part, very simple. Uh, I'll just show you how it goes. I'm not playing it exactly the same as Bernard Edwards played it, but it's kind of a rough approximation. So it just pedals on the, the, fifth, the fifth fret of the E string, the A note, playing for the A minor. And he's just pedaling between an, a fifth fret and an open E string. So it goes like this. Three, four. Okay. Now that is a groove. That's the, that's kind of what the whole groove of the song hinges off, I, I think. Um, gets repeated on the F chord as well. So this is the A minor chord. Then goes to an open E. Then I play uh, the second fret of the D string as an E octave. Then I go to the F, which I'm playing F, pedaling between the open E and the F. Now that, that's the interesting bit for me, because on first listening, you kind of just hear E, E flat, D, and then D, E flat, E. But there's a little pickup before he does that. He plays an open A string. So that is one of the things that really helps the, the thing groove for me. The amount of times I reference that when I'm doing something else, um, when I'm coming up with a guitar part, bouncing off an open string. Which you don't even notice. It's such a small little detail, but it, it really helps a groove. Um, the verse section is really simple. It just stays on the A, it doesn't move off the A, apart from pedaling to the E. Might do that. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you've got something from it and you've enjoyed it. If you're new here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get an alert every time I release a new video.